Unfortunately for my past few videos, and those who read my video descriptions will already know this, I've been having some trouble with the YouTube algorithm and their content ID bots not understanding fair use. I apologize for the inconvenience of me not giving up. Animal attack movies have been around for a long time, with popular titles such as Arachnophobia, The Birds, and Cujo, with the most well-known animal attack film being Steven Spielberg's Jaws. There have been many imitators trying to jump on the bandwagon of Jaws' success throughout the almost half decade that it's been out, namely any of the Jaws sequels, Jurassic Shark, or seemingly most hated among online film critics, Shark Exorcist. While those are all pretty terrible for various reasons, I once came across a film a few years ago that really shocked me as it was the first so bad it's good film that I had stumbled across accidentally. That film was three-headed shark attack. Unbeknownst to me at the time, Three-Headed Shark Attack is a sequel to the 2012 Two-Headed Shark Attack. I have not graced myself by viewing it as of now, and I don't plan on doing so in the near future. Whether that is fortunate or not, I do not know. When I first watched Three-Headed Shark Attack, it was because it started playing on the horror channel, the only TV channel I watch on the rare occasion I watch TV. It centres around a group of people, mostly young and scantily clad, obviously, this is a low budget shark attack film, trying to escape from a three headed shark that is trying to kill them. The shark turns out to be a product of pollution, and enjoys eating rubbish, so they use this to trick the shark and kill it. The film opens with a wide shot of an island and then cuts to its residence, meat bags ready for the chopping block. One of the guys decides to go swimming out to a buoy in back, and then we get a few shots of a really awful CGI three-headed shark. So while these idiots are messing around in the water, of course it attacks, it then jumps on land to attack, which of course looks shit, and surprisingly the guy who swam out the furthest in the water is the only one who survives. We then cut to this character called Dr. Thomas, who I can only assume is some kind of marine biologist or researcher at a research facility called Persephone, studying the Pacific Garbage Patch. Then some other characters called Maggie Peterson, Dr. Nelson, and Dr. Leonard are introduced, and we get some basic science -y dialogue. Can I start first? Testing pH levels or helping with today's specimen acquisition? We are then introduced to even more new potential employees, or activists, according to the Wikipedia article, one of them being Maggie's college ex-boyfriend, Totally not to increase the body count and create melodrama at all. After a bunch of dialogue that was really boring, so who cares about it to be honest, the shark attacks the facility and kills everyone inside aside from Greg and his group, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Thomas and Maggie. The island begins to flood and the survivors conveniently have to swim to Greg's group's boat, meaning two of them are eaten by the shark in the process. One of the guys from Greg's group contacts a local fisherman called Max, who agrees to help them, and he's played by Danny Trejo. The film clearly also attempted to gain more traction and popularity using the snakes on a plane method, by casting Danny Trejo as some hero. You know, like how Samuel L. Jackson is in Snakes on a Plane, another laughably bad film also involving animal attacks. Enough is enough! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! The shark heads towards a party boat full of stupid partying characters, imagine my shock, and the group of survivors try to warn them, but the shark has started ramming the boat. People start to lose their balance and fall into the water, so the shark eats them. Apparently the entire group is a hero complex, and decide to board the boat to save people slash help the injured. One of the passengers can't find her boyfriend, and Maggie and Dr. Nelson go help her find him. Before re-watching this film, this and a scene later were the parts I remembered the most. We find the man who is injured and bring him back to his girlfriend. On the way though, the shark tips the boat, eating Dr. Nelson. The ship starts to sink so the main group and their new pals dip out of there, but the guy who called Max, being the idiot the writers chose him to be, 
jumps on the shark's back to drive an axe into it, rides it as if he's water skiing, and it jumps backwards and eats him. I'm really losing my patience with this writing at this point. Three-headed shark attack also pulls a deep blue sea and has Danny Trejo be suddenly eaten by the creature after chopping one of its heads off in an attempt at a jump scare, and it looks atrocious unsurprisingly. The shark grows back extra diminutive heads from its stump for some reason. I suppose you could assume it's because the shark is a product of pollution, which Maggie theorises later that its mutant powers allow this, like it's the three-eyed fish from The Simpsons or something. On the other hand, this isn't a Tolkien-esque masterpiece, so I'm not going to grace it with such niceties as the benefit of the doubt. <sighs> so the group meet the guy from the beginning of the film and the shark's heads start to fight each other. They, again, conveniently come across two speedboats and most of the group leaves on one, while Greg, Maggie and some other guy who I didn't pay much attention to stay back. The speedboat carrying the other half is eaten by the shark and just blows up. It's quite silly, really. The remaining three try to keep the shark's attention using rubbish, and the nameless guy gets his hand bitten off, which is unfortunately the only part I laughed at on both viewings as the effect just looks so bad. Long story short, the handless guy sacrifices himself so the shark kills itself by fighting over him, and surprise, surprise, Greg and Maggie decide to get back together, One main thing that really stuck out and bothered me during the film that really reflect my criticisms are Maggie is constantly trying to save people, which is fine if that's just her character's nature, but she's really whiny and annoying, and some scenarios are ridiculous and make no sense. For example, when her friends are blown up and then eaten by the shark, which doesn't make much sense either to be honest, her response to this is, we have to save them after witnessing them die. You just witnessed them die, lady. What the hell is wrong with you? You could excuse this for shock, but based on what has happened previously in the film and its obvious low budget with low effort, implies this wasn't what the writers were going for. In summary, if you're looking for a genuinely good shark attack film, you should sit this one out. Nevertheless, if you're just looking for entertainment and a good laugh at some bad effects and some hammy acting, this is a film you'll probably enjoy. Much like the disreputable Sharknado series, a sequel titled Six-Headed Shark Attack was released in 2018, and a further couple of sequels are apparently going to come out in the years to come. Am I looking forward to them? No. Will I watch them? Probably not. If I do, will I review them? Who knows? When I originally watched this, it was described in the summary, the blurb, if you will, as a horror comedy, however I get the feeling that this wasn't the filmmaker's original intention. The dialogue is not funny and there aren't any recognisable attempts at jokes, there are no setups or punchlines. It seems that that description became a marketing strategy post-release due to a bad reception, and that's the funniest joke of all.